A hundred years ago, Germany was in a mess. The First World War had ended a few months previously, and Germany was being blamed for it. The Kaiser had abdicated, bringing an end to the monarchy. There was a, a revolution, there was poverty, there were food shortages, and a general feeling of humiliation and despair. People were looking for answers, and if possible, some kind of a scapegoat. All this economic uncertainty and political chaos led to small extremist political groups popping up all over the place. Left-wingers and right-wingers were fighting over the middle ground, sometimes on the streets. The scene was set for a machine fitter from Munich called Anton Drexler. Now, by this time, he'd already been active in politics for a year or two. And on the 5th of January 1919, he and a couple of associates founded the German Workers' Party. Drexler believed that one of the biggest threats of the time was Bolshevism, which he regarded as Jewish subterfuge. He made speeches laced with anti-Semitism and also declared both capitalism and communism failures. All pretty exciting stuff, but there was just one major flaw. Drexler was an incredibly boring speaker. The party's meetings attracted maybe a couple of dozen people and were held in the back rooms of local bars. As radical as Drexler's policies were, he himself was about as inspiring as an unenthusiastic university lecturer. That would have been the end of it, but in September of that year, one of the meetings was attended by a hitherto unknown Austrian man. And yes, it's that Austrian. I'm sorry, but when talking about German history in the first half of the 20th century, it is very difficult not to talk about him. The story that he was actually sent there to infiltrate the group and report on their activities appears unlikely. Likewise, the story that at that meeting he got into a very heated argument over whether Bavaria should leave Germany and join Austria appears quite doubtful. But what is certain is that the party leadership was sufficiently impressed by Adolf Hitler to invite him to join. And they put him in charge of publicity, or as it was known in those days, propaganda. And boy, did he do a good job. The first speech that Hitler had heard Drexler make was entitled, How and by what means can capitalism be eliminated? By contrast, just five months after joining, Hitler was able to address a rally of 2,000 people on the theme of the causes of our affliction. On the same day, he announced a change to the party's name. It would now be known as the National Socialist German Workers' Party. He turned the party's fortunes around and so became more and more influential in it. But Hitler had one small problem with it. The party was too democratic for his liking. He believed that the party could only achieve its aims under a strong, dictatorial leadership. Now, I don't rate Hitler very highly as a strategist, but it has to be said that in situations where he held all the cards, he didn't waste time agonizing over his next move. He knew exactly what needed to be done. And so, following some pretty acrimonious arguments, Hitler dramatically resigned from the party, leaving it without the best PR manager they could ever have hoped for. And then, a few days later, he offered to return, but strictly on his terms. And the party leadership caved. Hitler returned and took charge. One of the founding members left in disgust. Drexler continued to mentor Hitler, but was never again allowed any real power. And so it was that an obscure group of angry Bavarians went on to become the most notorious political force in modern history. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to send me a postcard, here's the address. And don't forget to visit my website and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Also, if you'd like access to special bonus content and help with the costs of running this channel, please consider making a small monthly donation on Patreon.